I'm Rachel Johnson, co-host of the Educals Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hey, Steve here, and my podcast, Teaching, Learning, Leading K-12, is hosted on Podbean. If you use my affiliate link when you sign up for podcast hosting, you will get one month free. I've been on Podbean for the whole existence of my podcast since November of 2013. In that time frame, I've had nonstop service. I've had easy access to assistance when I needed help. I've been able to upload unlimited pictures and podcast episodes. The dashboard is easy to use. And my Podbean community has grown tremendously. Looking at starting a podcast? Well, use my affiliate link to get one month free of hosting. Go to my website at stephenmaletto.com slash sponsors and click on the Podbean hosting link to see what plans are offered and choose the one that you like the best. You'll be glad you did. Hey, welcome back. Steve here. And today I'm talking with Hanine Salem from the Novus Consulting Group. We're focused on the need for cybersecurity awareness and training for students and teachers, as well as you know sharing potential career paths in the cybersecurity fields. So much to learn today. This is a cool conversation and so much needed. Thanks for listening. And uh, by the way, it'd be so cool if you would go to my website, stephenmaletto.com slash reviews and uh, rated the podcast. Could you do that for me? Thanks so much. You're awesome. Enjoy the show. Boone Titanium Rings, found on the web at boonrings.com, is an affiliate partner of Teaching Learning Leading K-12. And I'm also a customer. I have this really cool ring that's ca- got these carved pistons and, and stars in it. I love it. They make rings of titanium that are carved, laser cut, and engraved, as well as they have inlays of many types of materials like meteorite, acrylic, wood, carbon fiber, and so many other types. They also have special collections that are incredible designs. One of the top sellers are the Gamer Rings, the Stealth Series, and the Black Zirconium. As a note, they also make earrings, pendants, cufflinks, and for you musicians, they make cool trumpet mouthpieces. Love it. Go to boonrings.com and at checkout, use my code, capital T, capital L, capital L, capital K, number 12, and you'll get 10% off your purchase. So go check them out. I love my ring, and I know that you will love yours. You are listening to Teaching, Learning, Leading K-12, a podcast for educators, helping you help kids achieve their dreams. And now here's Steve with this week's show. Dr. Hanine Salem of Novus Consulting Group has spent the past 25 years working with education systems worldwide to help school districts prepare their students for life after graduation. She has shifted her focus to cybersecurity due to the ever-growing globalized society and economy. She is now making it her mission to ensure that districts equip students to be leaders in cyber citizenship. Dr. Salem has over 20 years of executive-level experience in education and human capital development. As part of her affiliation with large international organizations, she led major educational reform initiatives in the Middle East region. Her interest is concerned with improving leadership's decision-making process through rigorous policy analysis combined with results-oriented public management methods, such as strategic planning and program evaluation. While serving as the Associate Director of the Education Unit at RAND Corporation, her work largely focused on K-12 and higher education reform, evaluation of the implementation of education policies, and examination of topics related to human capital formation and skills attainment in the MENA region and around the world. In her capacity as Regional Office Director, she served as advisor to several senior officials engaged in ambitious development reform initiatives. It's awesome to have uh, Hanini with us today, and thanks for joining me today, and say hi to everyone. Hi, thank you so much, Steve. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, I'm glad you're here. And uh, so, Hanin, let's start by talking about why the Novus Consulting Group exists. I mean, what's its purpose or its why? Um, The Novus Consulting Group is, I'd like to introduce it as a firm that is dedicated to improving educational systems and empowering every student to make the world a better place. Um, We try to push new frontiers to improve education systems across across the globe and support youth development. Uh, We partner with K-12 and higher education institutions to develop timely solutions that address pressing challenges that our education systems are facing. This includes its cyber citizenship course, uh, among many other courses we are currently working on right now, um, to make sure we're helping children and young people develop 
the wide range of personal qualities, skills, competencies that are needed as they transit to adulthood and um, higher education and the workplace. Awesome. Awesome. So, so you got to know this. Um, if I ask you what it exists for, so you got to tell me what you do with them. What, what do you do with the uh, Novus Consulting Group? Um, I'm the managing director and um, also um, one of um, the few people that who founded the company at the beginning. And uh, my job in particular, I've been working in the education system and education sector uh, for more than two decades right now. And I came to know that sector very well. Uh, there are so many great things in our education systems around the world, but there are so many missing components, in my opinion. And while we continue to work uh, through our consulting arms on big challenges and issues that face these systems, um, our idea um, in, at Novus Consulting Group was to come up with a number of courses that complement the current educational offerings and focus on those skills and competencies that continue to show up in our research as missing as these students transit from the K-12 system to the next stages in their lives. And this is also why in, for our cyber citizenship course, we called it that uh, because we specifically wanted to send the message that this is an attempt, this is a course that aims at improving those skills, those competences uh, beyond the subject offerings of a regular educational system that will better prepare young people for the other challenges that are facing them as they during their school years, uh, but certainly as they transit to their next stages in life. Yeah, that's uh, that's so important. I mean, who, who would have thought a long time ago when uh, um, people were, you know, in my age bracket when you know I had teachers who were introducing us to if then go to statements which made games you know i had i had some math teachers in high school that you'd meet them in what was kind of sort of a computer lab <laughs> and uh, right. and uh i could get extra credit if i helped program in out of these magazines these different uh you know what were games and you know we've come from that type of environment where you know where everybody has these devices a more powerful computer in their hands with the phones and stuff and the social media aspect where I mean, I don't, you know, there's a lot of skills that we got to, we got to learn about. And I don't mean typing and stuff like that. I mean, what, right. what are some of those biggest problems you think that uh, kids really need to know about that you guys deal with, with the cyber citizenship course? I mean, we're trying, of course, the cyber citizenship course covers the important components related to this particular, you know, talks about hackers, talks about malware, it teaches about social engineering, uh, vulnerabilities, you know. So there are cyber, uh, cyber hygiene, social media, this is all covered in the course. It, but it also emphasizes on that aspect of what's my role? What is my role uh, in protecting myself, my family, my school, my community, my nation. So there's that citizenship um, component to it. And from our other, you know, from our research and other projects and what have you, there's almost a, a character education element to it, right? It's about teaching perseverance. It's about teaching responsibility. Um, it's about uh, your obligations, your responsibilities. So yes, I have fun when I'm on social media, but, you know, it's not, don't take this as a given right. You know, you are, you have to be a responsible young citizen and you have to deal with all these available tools um, with great responsibility and a sense of, again, citizenship. That's awesome. Cause I know that's, that's something that, uh, I think a lot of young people didn't realize as they, you know, as they got a little older and, and some who are in, you know, these different age brackets still don't recognize until it comes back to kind of haunt them, which is that <laughs> whatever they're saying out there isn't yeah. going away. And, it's not uh, going. <laughs> and they're, 
different ways of behaving with other people. And, uh, you know, you know, I think it's funny because like in, for some reason in the YouTube world, uh, people just like to just say bad things about people's videos. And it's like, right. <laughs> right. Right. And, and, and as you know, issues around also bullying, you know, uh, it, it, it's another big issue that is um, it just, just haunts us all. And, and so uh, we sort of indirectly touch upon these issues and we, by the way, it's of course, it's almost like a, a, a living document. Uh, every single year and sometimes before a year is over, we will, we, uh, we're committed to uh, reviewing and revising and updating content to make sure it reflects the latest in the field and it includes all whatever latest developments. And there are so many developments that are taking place on almost monthly basis, if not daily basis. Um, and so I, I, the other thing, uh, Steve, that I wanted to mention is that another objective of the course is really to ignite interest in the field. You know, th there is a serious lack if we talk work workplace, right? And um, in the on the supply uh, side of it, of um, uh, people who are skilled in, in cybersecurity and, and issues around uh, cyber. And, um, and, and unless you uh, expose uh, students to the subject from an early age, you know, it, it, we think it will spark interest in a number of people who have the aptitude for studies like that and, and hopefully um, will help guide them uh, to... Uh, pursue careers if this is suitable for them, if this is something they, they, is of interest of them, they like, and um, um, hence, uh, hopefully, contributing to uh, closing the gap. That That's excellent, because that's, you know, it is interesting, because it, there is a whole different world out there that uh, is should be real, you know, to some kids will be very exciting about, you know, I could find a career in this. And uh, and right. ho hopefully not the hacking side of it, but the, oh, okay. <laughs> the <laughs> defending us against the hackers and all that sort of stuff. And and I and I love that. That's uh, I mean to be able to expose them to that type of a, a world that uh, could be fascinating to them. I know I've uh, I've met several people who it's it's their job to defend their corporation and keep constant um, monitoring of it. And they have a team that works worldwide because of what the corporations do. And I I think what a what a neat sort of thing. And, and, and in it, this case, this was a kid, you know, he was a kid <laughs> who yeah. uh, um, just loved computers and then discovered through accident that there's a career path in this. So, Right. And, and as you said, Steve, I mean, the idea also a part of the, the program, you know, when we were thinking about learning outcomes and objectives of the course, um, we, um, by design, you know, uh, we want uh, students who take this course to be aware that there is the good side of, of things and the bad side of things. Right. And for those who have skills, we don't want them to fall into the hacker side of things. Right. We want them to utilize the skills they have have um, and be able to do good things. And so we, uh, we, we covered those topics and uh, definitely because the course was uh, designed not only by um, very competent and highly professional uh, cybersecurity uh, experts uh, and the best in the field, but also by um, educational people uh, who made sure it's age appropriate and, um, and, and is tailored to be um, uh, well understood and digested by the targeted age group. Um, so hopefully we will manage to, to convey all these um, messages. That's cool. And I got to tell you, it's, it's so well needed because uh, too often, uh, you know, kids kind of have the focus that, uh, well, you know, I'll just play around with this. If I can make it happen, I can make it happen. Whether there's a stop sign that says, don't go any further right. and, uh, or not. And, uh, whether it's, right. uh, you know, what they talk about or what they, uh, can do because they've learned that, uh, you know, a long time ago, uh, um, you know, school systems, you know, for the most part, school systems have gotten better, but you still have things like this. But I can remember in the early days, there were a system that I was uh, connected with. There were kids that got caught eliminating, they would hide the mail system. <laughs> 
the email oh, system. Yeah. They would. Yeah, it happened in my school too when I was nice. young. Nice. <laughs> yeah. it's yes, like, absolutely. It's like, why Why did you do that? Because at first everybody thought they deleted it. It turned out that they didn't know how to delete it, but they could hide it from everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. right. Exactly. Right. And and you know what? I mean, if, if you have those sort, of, those sort of skills and if you are able to do stuff like that, let's put it into good use, right? <laughs> and exactly. that's the citizenship side of it. You know, it's not a technical um, um, course per se, right? It, but it it serves um, um, several. We have several objective objectives, like the ones I've discussed, and um, and it by covering the material in the course, we are pretty confident that we will the student who takes the course will end up being very well prepared, fully prepared to protect him or herself and their communities and, and their schools and what have you. And, you know, hackers, the students are the weak link, right? This is how hackers can get into the more lucrative systems at the house, at schools, you know, uh, fathers or mothers or parents, institutions, what have you. So that's def- that defense line needs to be fortified. That's it's incredible what you're talking about because yeah I, I was listening to something the other day where the uh, the the cyber specialist was talking about things that people do with Facebook and uh, different social media aspects they're not thinking the type of information they're giving out and kids definitely exactly. have, have think from exactly. exactly where they live and what what's going on in their world so right right so just crazy yeah. so it's, it's, go, go ahead I'm sorry. Oh, what I'm just saying it just it's it's a it's a different world, you know, and it needs different tools, and it needs equipping students with a different set of skills and knowledge that was you know just a few years ago we were not even thinking about. You got that right. Who was who was thinking that someone would be coming after, especially coming after school systems? Because you think of cyber wars and stuff like this, dealing with high end corporations where people are trying to steal um, top level. Sec- security secrets and stuff like this, not coming after school systems where, you know, the, you know, the famous movie with Ferris Bueller, where someone's trying to go in there and change his grade, you know, that type of thing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. No. Yeah, definitely. And then we've also, Steve, I'd like to add that we've added another, yet another component to the course, which is accreditation. And, you know, with, with accreditations, it just, it's a way to prove our commitment to ensure students receive the highest quality training to protect themselves now and to help them reach their full potential in life after college. And so, you know, there was a lengthy accreditation process that we went through to make sure that um, the course meets the strict education standards that are contemporary, contemporary, engaging, focus on improving practice. And, um, you know, I'm not going to go through um, the various guidelines, um, but they are pretty stringent and, um, and, and require a lot of effort and continuous effort. And that is something we are fully committed to. That's awesome. That, you know, one of the things I have to ask, do you, um, when, when someone uh, completes this course, I mean, who, who are the people teaching the course? I mean, how is it uh, accessed? And, you know, how is it? Uh, we're we're going to get into, I got a whole bunch of questions around this, but yeah. really, who are your in, instructors and um, what does the course look like, I guess, is what I'm really asking. So yes, of course. So it's a, it's a nine mod. There are nine modules in the course, right? And it's taught. It is. It can be. Um, it is fully online, but there are twenty four hours uh, support system, and um, so dedicated, um, highly qualified people who are there to answer questions. We've designed it in a way. We've anticipated um, some uh, of what we expect the, the questions that would arise and we prepared answers so those can pop up you know uh, it's 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 an interactive program um and like i said if a student is stuck and a student can take the course by the way on their laptop on their iphone uh you know um they can start it stop when they want go back again and it's a gated course so you cannot move to the next module unless you successfully uh, finish and answer the questions at the end of the module before it. 
And, and so those assessments are uh, very relevant, of course, and um, we spent a lot of time worked with uh, many experienced people to make sure um, that it flows well, um, the assessment is relevant and enough, and uh, all the way until the end where you will get bad, you will get badges when you end, when you successfully finish every module. And at the end of it, you can get the certificate uh, from city and guilds, uh, which, uh, you know, it's a very distinguished accreditation um, that a student can add uh, to their um, CV um, and use that, you know, later on in college, when they go into the workplace. So it just, it's a win-win all around. Yeah, I can imagine that looked pretty good on uh, applying to colleges that it shows that you've done You've, exactly. Uh, no, basically, you're saying no matter what I've done before, I've completed a citizenship, <laughs> and, and I'm better now. So I, I look what I did. Right. <laughs> I like that. The, uh, um, well, well, that's cool. So, you know, who really is is an individual student your target, or families, or school systems? I mean, who, who, how, how do they access this? Or is it? I mean, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, it's it's really all the above, right? So we have um, individual students who just approach us. We have individual parents, you know, who approach us and they want to buy for their one or two or more kids. And then we have um, uh, school systems. Sometimes, you know, we're talking with some districts at this point, um, and um, there are a couple of actually governments around the world who are interested in this. And lastly, we've had... Um, expression of interest by a couple of um, really the largest NGOs in the world. So they are looking at um, buying licenses uh, for larger uh, numbers of students in, and then making it off, uh, make it in, making um, the course available for, um, in one case, uh, disadvantaged um, uh, communities or, you know, whatever the target of the NGO is. So, um, um, so, so that's kind of like, it, it really covers, and it's made, you know, it's not like designed for just larger schools or smaller schools or individuals. Anyone can take it. That's excellent. I, I like that because that's uh, knowing that it, you don't have to be a big organization to have no. to be able to participate. Um, right. No. Because uh, I know in my audience, I have a little bit of everything represented. So that, that's cool that uh, they can hear that, that it's possible they could, as an individual, reach out and uh, take the course. Absolutely. Very nice. Absolutely. So what, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, what type of data do you think is uh, most at risk of a cyber attack that students should be aware of? I mean, what's, what's some of that stuff that they're running into that they really should be just, hello, red lights going off, you know, type of thing? Right. And, and we talk about that in the course as well. Of course, your personal students, personal data, right, is, is the obvious one. And the problem with, with or the challenge or the risk with, with being hacked, it's, it's not only you, it's, it's the system, you know, at your house, at your school. Um, and there was an incident lately when a school had to ch shut down because of, I think, two or three days because of, because of uh, a hack hacker's attack. Um, so, so that data can go from anything from the profile of the student, their name, their information, their um, and, and their grades, their profile, their friends, you know, their contacts, and then to their parents, to, you know, teachers, schools, you know, I mean, just think about what you have, what, are, what an average person, what information any of us have on their laptops or on their phones, right? It's just unlimited. Most definitely, most definitely, and it's just to to know what you're. <laughs> just so much information that, uh, and, and with schools, obviously, one of the things is is all that personal information that's there, um, right. family information, and, and um, just talk. It's just a, just a, a an enormous amount. So yeah, it's a, it's amazing what they put at risk, especially for their families if they're not paying attention to that. Yeah, you know, right. One of the things that, uh, you know, do you teach t teachers how to talk about this as well? Do you have some way of having that uh, conversation? I mean, can you, we talk a little bit about that? I, I think so. I mean, our course right now, we're thinking about um, uh, developing a version that is um, 
targeted at teachers and educators. I mean, it, it's the whole ecosystem, Steve, right? You can't, you can't just work on one of um, one component in the ecosystem and neglect. So definitely teachers and uh, school leaders, uh, they need to um, make sure that they are equipped with the right set of skills uh, to, to deal with the situation and, and, and have enough. There's, there must be, I, I can see a point where um, it will be a requirement um, a minimum um, level of knowledge and skills uh, related to cybersecurity. I think we're heading in that direction. Um, but uh, the answer is definitely yes. Um, I mean, like anything else, right? Um, you can't just focus on the children. It's actually even parents, adults, etc. you know, they also um, um, should invest in making sure they have they they know how to protect their data and their information and their houses and their homes and their workplaces and 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 whatever environment they they exist in so much so that's so important and I, it's just and it's it's just sad because i you know a lot of times the kids even though they may not exactly know all of in and out what they're doing, <laughs> although they have right. exposure to it, they still have a, a lot of times greater understanding than the adults who are, may only be a few years older than them in the classroom. And it's just funny because adults a lot of times have the problem of thinking, um, hey, I'm the adult, I know better. And uh, and then suddenly they pushed on the little green button that <laughs> that held the school system for ransom. You know, uh, exactly, exactly. Uh, we also do have, there, there is a, a it seems to be a clear pattern that indicates that schools and, and district districts that deal with a larger number of students, you know, thus larger volumes of information are most affected by cybercrime. And and there could be, you know, a, there could be a lot of reasons behind that. You know, first of all, larger large schools districts manage more technology devices and systems than smaller enrollment districts. And, you know, they have more students and, and uh, employees using this technology. Um, smaller enrollment uh, translates to offering a smaller threat profile to malicious actors and a lower chance of being affected by user actions, you know, whether intentional or by mistake. Um, also, incidents that occur in a, a smaller school districts may be less likely to become publicly disclosed than in larger, more urban school districts. But there is a pattern at the end of the day. And it, and it does exist, and it can happen to either to any size, you know. But in general, there's a pattern that shows that um, uh, larger school systems are targeted more. That's, that's interesting because it's it's you know it's one of the things that I just it makes me uh, yeah just I, I just as a side note I got to go back to this because it keeps popping in my head. I mean, in the '80s there was a whole bunch of movies that dealt with this topic of, and everybody laughed at them because you know, like in one movie the principal's sitting there looking at the screen and right in front of his eyes, the kid's attendance is changing. You know, it's going from bad to oh, yeah. to perfect, and you know, and over and in another movie there's uh, they're messing around with grades, and the, the kid suddenly has a great uh, he he knows not to give himself A's, so he gives himself B's and C's. You know, that type of thing, and. And, oh, yeah. and, and we're way beyond that now. We're talking about, yeah. you know, not kids messing with their grades. We're talking about people just trying to get at all that information that uh, everything from, uh, you know, addresses to uh, um, the kids' real names to anything that could be identified with financial uh, documents as well and stuff like that. Right, right. It's definitely, I think... Um, um, the, the school that I was talking about earlier, um, it's, it's a Buffalo uh, public school, I think. Um, it happened in March. Hackers were actually able to shut down classes for days. They were able to steal sensitive student and employee information and destroy vital school records. Um, we think the payout is around $10 million uh, out of this attack. There was wow. another, you know, there, a recent case found that IT staff uh, were cautious of an attack months prior, but due to bad judgment and an absent cyber insurance policy, they failed to stop that attack. That's crazy. That is, it's just, it's just insane to think that, uh, and, and of all things, schools that it's like, 
we don't need to be spending money on that. We got other things, and and now we got to spend money on trying to figure out how to get our data released and uh, or right. whatever else they destroyed. That's that's just amazing. Uh, and and I think of and that's what's cool about your course. You know, is the idea of making um, kids and you know aware of uh, what it is they're putting at risk um, if they're uh, if they don't understand how to behave. I guess. If that makes sense. I, I mean, I really, I really think schools are not doing enough to protect and inform students about the cyber crime affecting them. You know, with federal funding um, as a result of COVID right now, schools, I think, have a unique opportunity to pay for training courses like the cyber citizenship course. You know, if, it's, if a school is improving cybersecurity to better meet the educational and other needs of students related to preventing, preparing for, or responding to COVID-19, it may use elementary and secondary school emergency relief funds, the ESSER, um, to achieve those goals. And so um, there's there's a lot to be done here, and uh, there's definitely room for improvement. Oh, I definitely agree with you because this is, this is something that uh, you know, I can't say it enough. I mean, it's funny we're in a world right now where um, lot because of COVID, lots of places have gone to they don't want to. You know, there's like if you go to some theme parks and things like this, they don't want to take money; they want to just have right. cards, and right. and they'll actually take. They some of them have created kiosks where you can go in the beginning to. Um, you stick your credit card in there and then it creates a little card and then you can scan the card when you go around the park. So you're not going to lose your credit card information, but it, you know, there's, right. and then there's stores that they want to just use your phone and, you know, right. you, you have that or your, or your special watch. <laughs> I'm right. on, pur- on purpose, not saying the name of companies, but you know, it's, but it's just an amazing, you know, we're getting so much into this type of world that it's also got to make us so vulnerable to stuff that we have no clue is going to happen. Absolutely. It's and everything, you know, it might be more convenient, uh, faster to process things. But along with that, you, no one tells you about the risks, right? It just, oh, so much, just scan this or get that or, you know, and it's, you know, but uh, on the other hand, there's a bunch of risks that are associated with all these amazing new technologies and, and developments that we need to be aware of and on top of and, and just equipped with the right set of skills and knowledge to make sure that um, no one can misuse those while we're using them. Uh, makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, how long does it take to do the course? I mean, is it, uh, I mean, it, it is it weeks? Is it days? Is it hours? Um, I think if a student, um, I mean, it, it can be done in 10 hours, 10, 11, 12 maximum hours, you know, um, and, and a student can, you know, can finish that in, 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 a, in a couple of days or three days. But I don't think um, it's uh, logical to assume that this will happen. So, you know, they can just divide it up, you know, spend it an hour or two a day, um, pause for a while and come back to it until it's fully um, uh, finished and, and, and the student can successfully answer all the questions and pass through the assessment. Excellent, excellent. So it's not, uh, it's, we're not talking about a doctoral degree here. We're, we're no, <laughs> no, we need to stay practical, prioritize, you know, engaging. So there are a lot of factors that um, were built into the decision around the size of the course. Very cool. So, so uh, we're getting close to finishing up. And uh, one of the things I, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, we've talked about, you know, one of the aspects of this is not only doing the course and cybersecurity, but it's also about exposing people to uh, kids to possible careers in these fields. And, and right. do you have anything else you want to share about that type of thing, about sharing with them, you know, where the future might lead them, that path? Is there anything there? Um, there, are two, there are two points here. Um, we don't know anything about if, about fields that we were not exposed to, right? And um, and there is so much shortage right now in the workplace, and it's, it's predicted to even grow more and more uh, over the next few decades as far as availability of um, of uh, people with the right set of like degrees and, and training in the field of cyber uh, security. 
And that's a big problem, right? Because it seems like there's a growing number of hackers. We don't have data, we don't have statistics, but obviously from all the cyber crimes that are taking place and, and the growing threat and, and ransom and, and, and what have you, you know, so... And, and and so these careers are pretty, you know, I'm not I'm not promoting anything. That's not my career. So but there is a real shortage in the marketplace. Um, and you know, the entire marketplace and the dynamics of the marketplaces and the workforce is just is just changing so quickly, you know, and I know that every year um, students just you know, it's it's a big question and dialogue at home. You know, what do you want to study? What do you want to major in? You know, what fields? And and we just need to to put that field on the map and start early by exposing students to that kind of um, of of pathway, if you want. And and another. Um, area that came up from a potential uh, customer of ours and it's a government that we haven't thought about uh, they're discussing with us um, uh, the possibility of of making this a track to encourage um, um, girls to go into stems um, and, and honestly we didn't we were not thinking about that you know we were not thinking about any specific gender going into the um, development of the of the course, uh, but um, they would like to use it to encourage uh, young girls and into um, going into the the field of um, cyber uh, security and or other related uh, stems um, 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 areas. Um, so that also is coming up. Um, but the main issue is there is a real gap. Um, in the work, uh, if workforce wise, um, that we think we hope that our course and courses like that will contribute into bridging. That's excellent. I love it, and this is it's so needed. It the, the you know it's it <laughs> to be able to expose them to show um, what you know potential career paths, and it, and it's just a cool thing because I mean it's one of those things that uh, um, you're right about. It's so needed. I mean it, there's we got lots of the technology everywhere, but not a lot of people who know how to guard the castle from <laughs> from the attackers. So, I, and and honestly, now I mean, in retrospect, like why didn't we think about that before? Like all of us in the education sector, right? I right, mean, right. The technology coming in, and and it was just like, okay, let's train students on how to use, you know, basic email and how to word and and PowerPoint presentations and. You know, but then there's that side that has been neglected for so long until now things are exploding and we can't look the other way anymore. Most definitely not. And I, just as a side note, I have to say this because, you know, we're uh, we're not sponsored by Zoom, but I use Zoom and we're using that. And I thought it was funny when in the beginning, um, as people were going virtual, um, they started experiencing, you know, the, the, Zoom, <laughs> the, the Zoom hacker thing going on. And, and really what that was was kids sharing the information about when we're going to have this class meeting and here's the information to get into it. And, and then, right. so suddenly guess what? The behavior that happens because <laughs> it's not right. It was exactly. Just, it's, it's been a learning curve for a lot of us. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm sure, I'm sure there would be an article or some research or some book about all the mishaps that have taken place during the past couple of years <laughs> very, with using technology. <laughs> very much so. It'd make a good book right there. That's for sure. Cause this is, we all, you know, at the time exasperating it now kind of funny and because we're solving them, but in the, but like you said, it's like, you, you think we would have thought about some of this stuff it's like do you think right. do you think we need to put a password on this you know and then tell the kids don't share the password anyway i just think it's funny that's good stuff well, well um hanin it's, it's been awesome talking with you today and um before we finish up because i got two last questions i want to ask you here in just a second uh, where would you send someone who would like to connect or, or and or learn more um i mean our website is probably a, a good place to start you know it's uh, novus group uh, dot co so novus n-o-v-u-s group 
dot co um and um and there's a way to contact we're very good at um in responding to emails and questions and following up and and uh i personally along with the person who's in charge of that uh, check emails and and check messages and and try to be as responsive as possible more than happy to answer any questions respond to emails you know get on a phone um, uh, explain more, uh, talk about um, the uh, specific characteristics of the program. And even in many cases, um, we're receiving requests for um, different types of uh, offerings. You know, can you tailor the, the program? Can you, can you make sure the course uh, includes um, another um, agenda that a school is interested in? And so we're open to all of that. That's excellent. Love it. It's, it's good stuff. I'll put the uh, website in the show notes so that they can easily find that link to, uh, to go learn some more information. Um, I, I got two last questions for you, Nina. And the first one goes like this. How do you keep going when so much is going on that uh, you may want to quit? <laughs> well, I'm not going to deny it. You know, every now and then <laughs> I can't do this anymore. It comes to mind, especially during COVID days. But, but the answer is there's so much to do. There's just so much to do. I literally wake up in the morning with, with motivated with new ideas that I want to pursue and, and follow up on. And, and, and so I just, and the need is so big, you know, having work, I've been working in the education sector for years and there are many issues around equity, accessibility, uh, making sure we give every child a fair chance to flourish and, and that requires um, that requires a lot of work and a lot of energy, and so that I think that's what motivates me. That's what keeps me going. Love that answer. Awesome. Thank you. And last question: Do you have a teacher in your past who made a difference in your life? If so, who was it, and what would you say if given a chance to say thank you? Oh yeah, for sure. No, that was long time ago. We're not talking about. We're not. We're not going to mention years or age right now. But uh, there was a teacher. Her her words to me still ring in my ears until this very day. Um, her name um, is Lila, and whenever um, any of us would make a mistake or um, not perform, or she would just look us in the eyes and say, "Never give up." It, it might sound now like a small thing, but for a child, you know, for a teacher to really look you in the eyes and say, you cannot give up. You understand? Never give up. I don't want to hear the word impossible. I don't want to hear the word difficult. You can do it. So she's just like such a motivating um, uh, power. And and I just keep thinking about her all the time. And, and I think she played an important role um, in who I am right now. That is so awesome. So cool. Thanks for sharing it. And uh, Hanin, this, this has been so cool talking with you today. Thanks for sharing about the Novus Consulting Group, about the, uh, the uh, student cybersecurity courses that you offer and uh, the need for cybersecurity awareness and the, and the possible career paths that, are, that exist as a result of it. You know, it's so awesome. And, and this is such a much needed focus. I so agree with you that, uh, you know, we, we, we need to make sure we've got this uh, out there for the kids. Uh, wishing you the best in all you do. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, and have a great day. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is excited to be a member of Voice Ed Radio. Voice Ed Radio, your voice is right here. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. <laughs> The opinions expressed on Teaching Learning Leading K-12 are those of the guests and hosts. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is intended to share ideas, advice, and suggestions for classroom teachers and school administrators. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is produced for educational purposes. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll share it with your friends.